Are you looking to apply to schools with BSMD programs? We wanted to let you know that you can calculate your chances of admission at schools that offer BSMD opportunities with your free CollegeVine account. Start by completing your chanting profile with information such as your GPA, test scores, and extracurricular activities. From there, you can use CollegeVine's hub tool to see your chances and information about different schools, such as cost, majors, and more. Visit the link in the description below to sign up and see your chances today. All right, so before applying, there's a couple things you want to consider. There's definitely a lot of time investment, right? This is what I talked about before. As a high schooler, before applying, you have to do your research into the schools and the programs. You have to look at the due dates. You have to look at the number of writing supplemental essays that are available that you have to fill out, a lot of things. There's additional academic, such as SAT2 requirements as well. There's a lot more writing supplemental essays, and oftentimes your workload will almost double when compared to applying to a similar undergraduate program. You also have to prepare for interviews, and there will be multiple interviews, depending on if you're invited to those interviews um, during the application process. Uh, we'll talk through the interview prep and interview uh, cycle in a bit. The selection criteria is also demanding, uh, just from admissions readers' eyes when looking at BSMB applicants. And there's a whole flurry of due dates. Uh, each school has its own deadline. It could be the first week of August, the uh, not first week of August, first week of October or second week of November, right? Each school is extremely different. It's not as synchronized as the undergraduate application process, which might be done via the Common App. Um, there's also some items you'll need, uh, the SAT, ACT, SAT2 subject tests, supplemental essays, a resume or CV, interview preparation, and letters of recommendation. There's a lot, a lot of things going to profile that you have to make sure that you have before even starting to apply to these programs. We could break the application process into four phrases. There's college list selection, essay and resume writing, interview process, and then interview days. And we're going to walk through each of these. So in terms of college list selection, the college list actually might differ based on the type of student you are, right? So a type one student might be a student who's confident about pursuing medicine and wanting to do a BSMB program. So 60% of the applications will be BSMB programs exclusively, while 40% of the applications uh, for the schools might be science major for the undergrad, right? The student could be interested in biomedical engineering or biology or chemistry, and you can definitely see that in their school list. A type two applicant is considering BSMB programs, but not sure how competitive they are. So in this, you might see 30 to 40% of the applications uh, might be BSMB programs, and 60% of the applications might be uh, for science major. Right? So it definitely does depend. A type three student. Now, this student wants to give a super hard BSMB program a shot or is unsure if they're competitive. Maybe they'll only apply to one to two applications for BSMB programs. And the rest of their applications uh, might be for another undergraduate major. Maybe they're not sure if they want to do science. Maybe they're interested in English, pursuing psychology or something like that. Right? Well, psychology is science, but uh, you get my point. Like, the student might not be committed to science as a whole, maybe not even sure about medicine in the first place but they still wanna give it a shot. So here you wanna decide what kind of student you are and that actually might kind of change how many BSME programs you apply to in the first place. So a really important thing to note when choosing college lists is all students should apply to undergraduate and medical programs. So don't really bank on the fact that you're gonna get into a BSME program because again, they are very, very competitive and it's not always a guarantee to get into the program in the first place. So that being said, you just wanna make sure that you're applying to the right program and the right fit for you. You also wanna select, oh, select the tier programs to which you're most qualified. So I brought up before the idea of elite and highly selective schools, selective schools and less selective schools. And so make sure that you're miss, making certain admissions criteria for the school of your choice. You also wanna select programs that you see yourself attending their medical school. You wanna find undergraduate schools that fit your ideal pre-med path 
So you want to ask things like, do you like the degree offerings? Can you pursue research internship shadowing here? And does the college challenge you? Does it push you to be better? And that's really essential, right? You're going to a university to learn and become a better learner, eventually maybe enter the medical field or industry or something related that you're passionate about. So you wanna make sure that the college you're attending actually pushes you to be better, pushes you to become a smarter, more intellectual being, right? Um, so here's a better kind of in-depth look at, again, kind of the rankings. Uh, so elite programs would be Northwestern, Case Western, Brown, Rice, Baylor, highly selective, but not quite elite. It'd be BU, Rochester, Rensselaer, UMKC, uh, selective programs, Drexel, Rutgers, NJIT, Hofstra. Of course, there's others added to the list. This is just kind of an example. All right, the second stage of application writing is the essays and resume. So before we dive into that, um, just another event that's coming up. Uh, we have this college fair that's happening next week. So the college fair next week is actually very exciting. We have almost over a hundred colleges coming to talk to us, talk to you guys um, across the entire weekdays of next week. There'll be approximately five, 10, 10 different colleges every day or something like that. Um, so it's really, really exciting. So for example, uh, September 21st, 4 p.m. Eastern, we have Wellesley College student panel. So students from Wellesley College will be talking to you in person, really discussing why Wellesley is a great college, what are some of the upsides, what are some of the downsides, what to consider when applying to Wellesley in the first place. So just feel free to check out our college fair event. You'll definitely kind of run into one of the schools, at least one of the schools that you might consider applying to, and it'll be really helpful to see those events. All right, so diving back into the essays and resumes. In addition to undergraduate essays, you must submit supplemental program essays. These essay archetypes include questions like, why medicine, why program, a reflection upon your medical experiences, and other essays such as leadership, talking about leadership, talking about problem solving, excuse me, your favorite hobby, et cetera. Point being, on top of the supplemental essays for certain undergraduate schools, you're gonna have a lot for uh, the medical school BSMD programs. So let's talk about the why medicine essay first. At the end of the day, the admissions committee is admitting a medical student. So you need to portray yourself as mature, problem solving, ambitious, and most importantly, passionate about medicine, right? And these are characteristics that make a strong doctor. The purpose of this essay is to provide a convincing argument as to why you're choosing medicine in the first place. So a good breakdown that I like to give students in the past um, as a good template to start the why medicine essay was something called uh, the past, present, future kind of uh, setup, right? Uh, structure. So you'd probably start off your essay talking about what inspired you to enter medicine in the first place, what are your core values and how you demonstrate them. In the present, you wanna talk about what are you doing now to share your passion for helping others? What does being in medicine mean to you? And then in the future, you might wanna talk about things like, how do you hope to impact the world in the future? What do you hope to accomplish? And try to keep it specific to medicine. And so the Why Medicine essay is actually one of the biggest essays that you'll encounter, typically in the same kind of writing word count limit as the general common app personal statement, um, just very specific to BSMDs as a whole. The next essay you might encounter is the Why Program essay. So this type question focuses on what are the factors that make the program unique to you? The admissions reader is trying to assess your desire to enter, attend the school and if you're a good fit in the first place. So the different variations of these questions could be, why are you applying to this program? What about this program it excites you? How do you plan to utilize the program to your benefit? And how does the program fit in your future goals? How will the program help you accomplish these goals? The next type of essay is more specific to what kind of medical experiences have you had? This type of question focuses on your own experiences to formulate an answer. The admissions reader is assessing how much you've experienced and how much you've learned from the experiences in the first place. So it's questions like, tell us about a time you spent with a doctor. How did that influence you? Describe a research project you've worked on. What kind of doctor do you aspire to be? What do you believe are important traits for a doctor to have? I mean, so it's really just a myriad of questions. Uh, you're not gonna get all of these, but these are potential ones that you could get. And the best way of answering these questions is really just referring 
back to your medical experience as a high schooler and talking through why these things are valuable to you. Um, more so to provide support for the best answer that you can get. Another component of your application will have to be your resume, resume or CV. Uh, with most applications, you have to submit a resume in addition to your supplemental essays. So be sure to ex include experiences that show off your medical experiences. Include high school statistics, uh, such as GPA and SAT or ACT score. Uh, prioritize medical experiences first in the activity section. And this is kind of important, right? So in the activity section, don't just list everything. Try to include medical things first. Include an awards and honor section. You can include a skills section if there's space. And then typically one page should be plenty. As a high school student, I know you guys have done a lot, but the admission theater won't really flip through pages and pages of a resume. Try to keep it short and one page should kind of just be enough. All right, the interview process is the next phase. So interviews are, once your essays are reviewed, you must wait for an interview invitation. Getting an invite to interview is the next step in your admissions journey. So after you submit your essays, weeks later, you could start hearing back from universities, inviting you for an interview, which typically takes place on campus. If you get an interview, you kind of know you made it to the next stage of BSMD admissions. But if you don't get an interview invite, oftentimes that means you've been rejected as an applicant. Interviews matter because historically only 20% of applicants receive an invitation to interview. They assess the strengths of the student outside of writing ability and academic performance. And they consider things like critical thinking, communication strength, and again, assess your passion for medicine, but more in kind of a personal way. Interview days uh, are the times when students actually, applicants get on campus and conduct interviews. Again, this will change in the COVID environment. You'll meet interviewees and program directors all at once. It's usually a day long event on the medical school campus. And there's a mix of tours, presentations, meet and greets, Q and A sessions and interviews. Now, interviews have actually changed thematically over time. Uh, the standard interview, you'll generally give two standard interviews. So there's two separate locations that you'll give these interviews when on site or on campus. You'll give one through the undergrad committee. You'll convince the undergrad school why you're a good student at that uh, university. And then you'll interview with the medical school, convince them why you're a future, potential future, strong future medical student. This may be a one-on-one -on -one or a panel of interviewers. They typically ask pretty predictable or traditional questions, like tell me about yourself. Why do you want to pursue medicine? Uh, why does the school interest you? Right. The other format is something called multiple mini interviews or MMI. This has recently become a lot more popular than standard interviews um, for a couple reasons. It definitely allows you to assess a lot of different question types. You can get the traditional type questions that we talked about before. You can have ethical judgment type questions or problem-solving questions. This might happen in a one-on-one -on -one interviewing kind of format or a peer group work. Uh, MMI interviews are actually given through a different kind of unique format. So you can imagine that all these applicants are put into a room and one by one, they're sent to different stations. And there's usually six to 10 rotating stations. And at each station, they assess a new thing. So one station could ask a simple question, why medicine? Another station could be a group work activity where you have to build a bridge out of straws with other applicants. Another station could be something about answering an ethical question. So it might ask, are mandatory vaccines ethical? You have to talk about that to an interviewer. So on that kind of vein, rotating stations assess a lot of different things uh, based on the stations that you go to. The MMI format assesses the student with a lot more depth. It's often actually, it's becoming the new norm. So a lot of medical schools and BSMB programs are starting to assess via MMI interviews. It'll benefit a well-rounded student who can think quickly, critically, and works well with others. It's difficult to prepare for specific questions, but you can prepare for the different types of questions. So standard interviews will have more predictable questions that you can prepare for, talked about before, while MMI interviews will have more abstract questions that are well suited for students who can think quickly. 
most interviews, dependent of type, uh, will ask the quintessential why medicine question. So whichever interview you ever go to, always prepare with that why medicine question. So why do you want to be a doctor? Why did medicine intriguing to you? That kind of thing. Some typical interview questions. Uh, tell me about yourself. Why do you want to be a doctor? If you're not accepting this program, then what? Tell me about a time you led a team. Or what do you consider to be the most influential medical discovery in the last decade? So uh, in green, it's kind of like the category types of questions. These are all pretty typical questions that you could probably run into in a standard interview format. Some best practices for interviewing. Um, these are professional interviews. So wear appropriate attire, bring your resume, and have plenty of energy to be ready to share. At the end of the day, you're gonna be meeting, meeting a lot of admissions directors, a lot of fellow applicants who might be your students, or not students, classmates. So give a good impression. Make sure that you stand out amongst the crowd. When answering questions, be specific in your answers. Never respond with, I don't know. Give examples. At that point, you know, interviews want to know more about you. They don't want to know that you don't know nothing about a question. Try to give your best logic, give your best explanation. And most importantly, you want to relate most of your responses back to medicine. Again, you're applying for a medical program. You're not applying for a music program. So you want to talk about medicine, really keep that focus. You also want to deliver your responses with confidence and poise. Don't rush your answers and have points prepared ahead of time. And one of the last points um, here are the interview and recommendation letters. Um, before we get into that, uh, actually, let me finish the slide off. Um, so interviews and recommendation letters are more commonly used as a method for elimination. Um, these are, again, kind of more personal attributes. Um, interviews, only 20% of applicants get. So it's once you reach the interview stage, you're kind of competing against the other interviewers. So if you don't perform as well, it might be a mode of rejection. Also, because of COVID, the standard for letters will become uh, higher. You want strong recommendation letters, either from science teachers or teachers that you know really well. You definitely can't sleepwalk through the alumni interview or interviews in general. You need to provide thoughtful, genuine answers. And performance does not speak to be perfect, just high energy and authentic. And ideally, your recommendation letters need to be positive not just perfunctory. In terms of timeline, um, ideally by now you probably completed the common app essay. You may be considering retaking the SAT or take the subject test if COVID allows it. Again, this PowerPoint was made, a uh, presentation was made before kind of the height of the pandemic. Um, up until December, you wanna work on your supplemental essays and BSME applications, and again, the timeline, the due dates are very variable across many schools. So make sure you're submitting on time. And oftentimes a lot of the due dates happen between October and November. You wanna start preparing for interviews. And then starting usually end of January, the interviews will start themselves. And then mid-March, uh, I guess end of February into March, uh, decisions will be announced.